Hello and welcome to Will Watches. This is Vinland Saga episode 3. So we saw last episode that this hit has been taken out against Fors and I am really worried for him. I'm assuming Fors is going to die and then the rest of the show is going to be Thorfinn's revenge on that. Last episode I'd said about the possibility of Thorfinn sneaking on a boat and actually seeing his dad die but another part of me now has thought what if he sneaks on a boat, comes and joins and then him being there puts himself in danger and that is the reason Fors dies and then he starts to blame himself and is racked with guilt for like it being his fault that his own dad died that would be even worse so I'm really dreading that happening so before we jump into this be sure to check out the Patreon page over there you can find one week early access so you can get episode four and five right now you can also find polls so you can vote for what's next and you can find a full length timer based version of this where you just sync up your own footage and you can watch along with me. So yeah, let's just jump right in. Troll, yeah, it was Thor's the troll, wasn't it? Thor's Do the rest of the Joms Vikings know about the mission? Yeah, that's here the reasoning. Okay, just for the deserting the battle. But why is he passing the job on? You know, is he scared of force himself? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Floki has this scar. I wonder if we'll ever find out how he got it. すっぽ抜けちゃって。おい、おい、気をつけろよ。俺に当たるとこだって。え、なんか注意 <laughs> そいつは見たかったな。おお、ワオ。口だけではないようだな。いや、でも、ブフ、ジャスト、ライク、プレイング、チェス、ヘイ。ブロキ、ヘッド、サンワン、プランティッド、バー、ヘイ、オーディー、
トルフィンのやつ、父上のお見送りもしないのフォーフィン is definitely hiding away in that ship then, yeah. トルフィンに伝えてくれ、その。はい、伝えておきます。Yeah, he doesn't need to say it. She knows. <laughs> The strip for five men, yeah. Yeah, they're gonna end up turning around. <laughs> Yeah, they're exhausted just after that. Do they not have the experience? Like, what are they gonna be? They don't have the endurance for a battle, you know? Yeah, they can't stop now. Yeah, they can't stop now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Look on his face. <laughs> I was thinking maybe he was just taking a piss looking directly at um, Leaf's boat, you know? I mean, look how happy he is, though. Yeah, as long as they get their money, it could be the case that Fours gets killed and then someone comes after him for killing Fours, you know? <laughs> he knows he's in for a grand battle, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, he does have the navigation skills. This seeing how impressive he actually is. And when he made it all the way, didn't he, to Canada? I didn't realize this would be um, using like real historical figures like Leif Erikson. I didn't really like put it together until editing that Leif was Leif Erikson. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we saw that. We saw Helga holding her as a baby. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hold her properly. Oh, so did he neglect her a bit at first? We've seen how much kinder he is now, but he wasn't back then. Is this really how you're gonna treat your child? At least Helga, you know, put him in his place a bit. Yeah, that's what made him soft. <laughs> That wasn't the type of um, story he was expecting, was it? Oh, seagulls. <laughs> I hate seagulls. I'm surprised in my last place that seagulls didn't interrupt my um, recordings that much. <laughs> Just squawking outside my window. Look at that, the smear frames on the drumstick. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking there's something happened at this town. The way it was kind of hidden away. Not an ambush already, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they got speed up. Oh, yeah, that's fully damned it off. Wow, okay. <laughs> I was just a chair on its own. They got no choice to go to that village then. This is their first encounter with actual battles now. Ari's getting what he wanted, but it might not be good. Yeah, they're continuing that, um, that drum beat. Okay, okay, so it is them meeting them here. 
I thought it might have been Fours on his own, winning me at glad, but I guess not. Yeah, that means all the kids are at risk as well. Yes. <laughs> He's finally facing it. Fours is going to try and be diplomatic at first. Talk to them, maybe. Mm, yeah. Oh, hallucinogenic to go like berserk, yeah, right? Was that fours jumping? Yeah. <laughs> it's not unfair that way, it's unfair this way. Oh, is he not even gonna kill them? He's just gonna knock them out. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't even drawn his sword. Asuka, that is um, impressed, yeah. Oh. Get cut it off right there. Okay. Okay, so that was Vinland Saga episode three. It's all going down now. We have this ambush. Fours is basically forced to fight, but you can tell he really doesn't want to do this. But there's no other option. He needs to do this to protect Forfin, to protect Ari, to protect all the others, protect Leaf as well. I really wasn't expecting it to happen here. I thought maybe they'd get to Norway and then go to where they were supposed to be going. I didn't expect them to be, you know, met halfway here. And like Leaf is here too, which I wasn't expecting as well. I was expecting maybe just Fours and Forfin on their own or just Fours on his own. But this changes the whole dynamic. Having the others there, it forces Fours to fight and he is like trapped in here as well. So there's no fleeing anyway. So I feel like even if he can win this fight, if he was on his own, there could be a situation where He's beat everyone else, but then they're holding the others hostage and he has to, you know, just give up his own life to protect them. That's what it feels like it could be happening here. So then we're still left in the dark a little bit with Floki and his motivation behind all of this. You know, he said there was a order out for his execution and that order's been standing for 15 years now. But Asselglad seems to think that is a lie and I'm inclined to agree with him. It seems like there's maybe something more personal between Floki and Fours. It could just be an inferiority complex from Floki. Like if Fours is the best warrior around and he was always the best and Floki was like living in his shadow and then suddenly Floki finds out that he was still alive. Floki was assuming all this time he was like one of the best in the world but now he knows there's someone stronger than him. He um now wants to take him out so then he can take up that title of the best. I don't know how good Floki actually is but that's just a theory there. And Floki is just hiring out Asselglad to um rid himself of the consequences of killing fours and if like somehow it came out that he was the one that killed fours and then there'd be repercussions from the king if that was exposed you know and we see just how impressed Asselglad is you know I am wondering what his take on all of this is is he just in it for a good fight and then you know he gets the money as well he gets like 10 pounds of gold as well he seems like he could be one of those characters that is just really loving a good fight you know where he just wants a good fight he doesn't care about anything else he just cares about battle and i feel like we see that a lot you know so many characters they're really up for a fight and i feel part of that is the mentality that um valhalla gives you because valhalla is like if you die in battle you go to valhalla which is essentially heaven but that means it encourages so many people to be warriors and to fight to want to try and get into valhalla and then we see in the op that um the older version of Thorfinn is with Askeladd on his boat along with Bjorn as well. So I am wondering what that dynamic is like. Does Askeladd kill Thors and then take Thorfinn under his wing? Like does Askeladd know that it is Thors' son and Thorfinn is just there biding his time waiting for a point to get his revenge? Or does Askeladd say, hey, this wasn't me. I'm the one who killed him. Yeah, but I wasn't the one who took a hit out. Let's go and find Floki and kill Floki. 
that could be what's happening. I feel like there's a few possibilities there, but that dynamic is really weird actually. Or does, you know, it could be a case where Thorfinn just lies and say, hey, I was kidnapped by this group of people. Can I come with you instead? You seem strong, you saved me. He like acts it up that way and pretends that he's not related to Thor's. Like I'm really wondering about that dynamic now. I really love, you know, Thor's ideology and mentality is great when Ari was asking you know tell me a story about um war and he was actually telling this sentimental story about Helga and Yulva and how he was naming her and it was almost a story on you know it was like an anti-war story really it was showing how it was showing how like disconnected he was from his humanity before having his daughter and how having his daughter you know it meant he actually developed some emotions and some caring and built him into the great man we see him as today who's really protective over his village and is a great leader and i feel like part of that is you know right when they were about to fight Ari was like oh yeah let me at them and then Fors was like no you're just a farmer you can't fight here but I feel like that's almost a testament to how good of a leader Fors is you know he's raised them all where they've never had to fight they've all had a comfortable life so they're not good fighters obviously yeah but that's because he's you know let them live comfortably and let them live well even though it's not like great by today's standards they are you know in the middle of nowhere just farmers and things but it's quite a simple life and just a nice life much better than being at war but the grass is always greener on the other side and the kids haven't seen war and of course they have that motivation to try and get into Valhalla as well and try and like prove themselves as a man I feel like that's a recurring thing here what does it mean to be a man really all of these boys they have this notion of what it means to be a man to be strong and like provide and like you know they're all proposing to Yulva when they come back they'll all marry her when they come back and become strong men and she isn't interested in that at all really you know even for said she's into strong men but it's not particularly the physical strength it's like the emotional strength and you know willing to do the right thing men like her dad who can take care of themselves they're not reliant on her perhaps they've got a strong personality but maybe not they didn't have to necessarily be physically strong and that's what they all think they need to be to impress her like strong as a warrior and strong as a person are two separate ideals really so next episode i am expecting things to go south it feels like this will finally be the episode where we actually lose fours although there will be some epic battle in between them we see this other character bjorn he takes this um mushroom eats his mushroom and i do know that historically didn't they use that as like a hallucinogenic to go berserker they call them berserkers you know it causes them to go berserk they don't feel the pain because they're just like high tripping off this mushroom i'm assuming that's exactly what was going on there so bjorn is ready to fight but it seems like from the op that he does survive so that kind of spoils it a bit but you know we see just how great a warrior Fords actually is the infamous Fords the troll he's just there leaps onto their ship i didn't see how far he actually jumped but he just jumped right onto their ship and then was like taking them out just not even drawing his sword he just whacking them on the chin just hitting them on the face really and that was what was knocking them straight out we've seen how strong he is you know he's got the strength of five men at least i was wondering you know when they brought that barricade down and blocked off the exit could he have just you know being strong enough to move all of that rubble out of the way or do something to clear the path you know he does have this like supernatural strength that they play up for the sake of the story and the storytelling and then like a little correction i guess from the last two episodes i didn't realize that there would be historical figures in this like leaf erickson i wasn't looking out for historical figures so when leaf was there it didn't clock to me that he was leaf erickson and i didn't really know that much about leaf erickson either but i do want to say i'm not like huge on the history here so if there are things 
that are historical things that have happened that are spoilers for the show don't tell me you know you might assume that i know because it's history and like common knowledge but i feel like you should just err on the safe side and leave it out you know i don't know that much about leaf erickson apart from him traveling a lot like leaf here actually did so it was all true it wasn't him bullshitting even though the kids maybe force it was but i don't know you know is did the real king harold get killed by someone named Thorfinn and that's and then everyone assumes that from history that will be where the show ends but I don't really know that history so even if it's something you assume should be like common knowledge don't comment it just in case it is like actually a spoiler for me I thought I'd just give that like disclaimer I'm not like a huge history buff anyway but like viking history I really am quite in the dark for that. And it feels like next episode will be the wake up call that everyone needs. I think, you know, even here, Ari, he's saying, like, oh yeah, let's get into battle. But then when he's finally there, he's still saying, yes, it's finally my time for battle. But he is like shaking, petrified. And Ford says, you know, don't draw your sword. Don't fight. Don't use the word kill so lightly here. And we see Ford, he isn't actually killing anyone yet. He has come to hate that, hasn't he? and it feels like part of the main theme of this show is actually quite a lot about masculinity and what it means to be like a true man all of these boys they think they're trying to become a true man by going into battle but really Fawz is teaching them the other way being a true man by being honorable and be and by being kind but sometimes having to make hard decisions and doing what's necessary to protect your family and i do wonder in the next episode if we get a one-on-one -on -one with Asolad and fours you know how good of a pair up are they actually is fours just wildly better is he rusty and that's what gives it to Asolad? like could Asolad um say like oh if you were in your prime i would have lost but because you're an old man now i've got the advantage here although Asselad, he isn't that young himself really is he he doesn't look that young but we do see Asselad, he is quite intuitive you know he caught on to the fact that that was there was that joms viking hiding in spying on them during their conversation and the other guy took him out for them he is quite perceptive and kind of knows what's going on and he kind of saw right through floki as well so he does seem like a real interesting character and it'll be cool to see where this dynamic goes in the future if he is the one training for Finn. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, consider leaving a like or a comment. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date for all the future uploads. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.